And a very good afternoon. Now, on the show a few weeks ago, we met Dr. Elaine Saunders, founder of Blamey Saunders Hears, and we learned all about the wonderful hearing aids they've designed and manufactured. For people with hearing loss, these aids are not only affordable, but they can dramatically improve the quality of life. Daniel Pistrito is an audiometrist, a clinical coordinator, and assistive listening device specialist at Australian hearing aid company Blamey Saunders Hears. He also you might not know this, has a profound hearing loss. And he's here today to talk about the impact untreated hearing loss can have on you in the workplace. Uh, First up, Daniel, a very good afternoon to you. How are you today? Not too bad, thanks, Rod. Good. Now, firstly, tell us about your own hearing loss and what impact it had on you when you were growing up. Well, my hearing loss began slowly when I was about 13 years old um, and only affected my left ear at the time. Mm. Um, I had surgery on, on on that ear when I was about 19 years old, but it developed um, an in, in ear infection not long after, and that left me totally deaf in that ear. Um, by that stage, the hearing in my right ear had begun to deteriorate quite significantly. Um, so for the last 25 years, I've had no hearing in my left ear, with my right ear getting progressively worse. Um, and the hearing in that right ear is now at the severe profound range. Okay, so what sort of technology do you use to help you hear, and what sort of difference has that made in your life? Um, I've been using a hearing aid in the right ear um, only um, for about the last 25 years. But because the hearing in the ear has continued to drop, I've needed to upgrade to more and more powerful hearing aids. Um, and while at first um, I'd only used the hearing aid during lectures, while I was at work, and watching television or a movie, um, as time progressed, I was relying upon the hearing aid to be able to hear sounds around me. Up until recently, I also used what's called a cross aid in my left ear, which basically um, wirelessly transmitted sound from the left side over to a hearing aid in the right um, and while that was helpful in certain situations like if I was driving the car it wasn't a huge amount I had in social situations that about five months ago I had a cochlear implant I left here and that was without a doubt one of the best decisions I've ever made and while I'm still slowly learning to understand speech fluently through the implant I definitely feel I'm hearing more now um, than I have in a very very long time um, as an example, I can, I can walk through the park now and not only hear the birds chirping, but be able to tell that I'm hearing three or four different breeds of birds just based upon how different they sound. Yeah, that is amazing and that sounds fantastic. Now, earlier you were telling me that the co-founder of BSH actually led the development of technology that is in the cochlea to make sound clearer and more natural and that that technology is also used in Blamey Saunders hearing aids. Can you tell us a bit a bit more about that, about those hearing aids that you guys have got? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Professor Peter Blamey worked on the clear implant for about 20 years. Uh, most notably, he helped develop a sound processing technology that makes speech sound as natural and audible as possible in noisy and quiet environments. And it's actually used today in headsets and to make telephone calls clearer. It's also using Blamey Saunders hearing aids. And the processor is very selective and constantly analyzes your listening environment in detail and makes automatic adjustments to base, uh, to match, sorry, your uh, personal hearing requirements. Um, And it was developed to deliver a truer to life sound quality than traditional compression hearing aid technology. Now, Daniel, can untreated hearing loss affect day to day functioning in the workplace? And I should imagine it would. Absolutely. So, speaking from personal experience, uh, you might find that you tend to struggle to follow what people are saying during meetings, um, have to ask colleagues to, re- to repeat what they say all the time, generally misunderstand what's being said, uh, find it hard to understand somebody over the telephone. You tend to avoid socialising with colleagues. Um, you can get confused about the direction the sound is coming from. And generally, you tend to find that work is a mentally, emotionally and physically exhausting environment to just be in. Yeah, it wouldn't make it a lot of fun going to work for you. So I suppose if your boss or your colleagues are unaware, they just simply don't know that you have hearing loss, they may think that you're a bit vague or that you are a person who ignores instructions. Absolutely, Mm. Rod. Um, When you have a hearing loss, it it, it can sometimes just seem easier to just smile and nod um, instead of continually asking somebody to repeat something, especially when you don't want them to know that you have a hearing problem. 
But doing that, you could just end up giving the impression that you're just not interested in what they have to say, or you could actually end up just agreeing to complete a task that you're totally unaware of. The other risk that you face is that you can be overlooked for opportunities because sometimes it can be easier for them to just ask somebody else than to go through the struggle of explaining and then re-explaining it to you. Yeah, so what advice would you give to someone uh, starting to feel that their hearing loss is holding them back in the workplace? So I should imagine that would be, well, tell somebody at work. Absolutely, Rod. The first first and foremost, uh, make sure that you do go and get your hearing tested and yeah. start wearing hearing aids if need be. From there, life is just going to be one significant step closer to being easier. Um, research shows that the sooner you, you get help with your hearing loss, the less impact it will have on your life. If you still find it hard to hear in your workplace after you do get hearing aids, it might be best to speak to your manager about your difficulties. So your manager should explain your employer's policy uh, for supporting people with a health condition, what the next steps are for making sure you get the support that you need. Do your research beforehand so that you, you know your rights in the unlikely event that your manager isn't supportive or responds badly to your hearing loss. There are also many devices available to assist um, in understanding on the phone or in meetings. I personally um, use a remote microphone device which is designed to direct the sound of the speaker straight to my hearing aid and my cochlear implant. So this can be discreetly put on a table during meetings and allow me to be 100% sure that I can hear my co-workers and my clients correctly. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. Now, how can employers make the workplace more accessible for staff or for colleagues uh, that have got hearing loss? Well, firstly, if you know that somebody has a hearing loss, it's important that you look at them directly and make sure that they know that you're talking to them. Um, Sit them in such a way that they're facing the direction in which people approaching them will be coming from and ensure that there's sufficient comfortable lighting. Don't sneak up behind them. Um, talk clearly and in front of them. Generally, echoing rooms are really unhelpful, especially for meetings. Mm-hmm. So it's worth investing in soft furnishings to minimise the amount of reverberation in, in meeting rooms um, and in the general office space. I mean, even the most sophisticated hearing aids can struggle to deal with something like reverberation. Um, for people with very severe, severe hearing losses, it's a good idea to have a loop system installed in a meeting room or access to a wireless listening system. Most importantly, never, ever say never mind. This is without a doubt one of the worst things you can say to somebody with a hearing loss, especially if they've been struggling to understand a conversation. Never mind basically sends them the message that you've given up. The hearing loss should be one of the first things to discuss with a person. So it's really crucial that you understand what does or doesn't work for them in terms of communication. Yeah, no, it's all about support, isn't it? Uh, Are there any potentially hidden hearing dangers in the workplace that could increase a person's hearing problems? Absolutely. So if, if if you work around hearing hazards, you should wear hearing protection whenever you need it. The biggest problem is the people who are frequently exposed to dangerously loud noises don't realise that it's that loud. And sometimes it's not just a matter of how loud the sound is, but how close you are to it and how long you're exposed to that sound daily. So, for example, sitting within a metre of a photocopier for eight hours a day, it's likely it's going to damage your hearing over time. Mm. Now, there's information online that compares how loud a sound is with how long you can listen to it safely. Um... Another thing is lots of people with desk jobs tend to listen to music through headphones or an iPod as, as they work. And some studies show that your hearing can actually be damaged within 15 minutes of listening to music with your personal music player set at a maximum volume. So if the noise is uncomfortable, if it makes your ears ring, or if your hearing feels a bit dull afterwards, then it's simply just too loud. Now, there are actually smartphones that measure the environmental sound. So if you think your workplace is too loud... Do some sound checks and alert your employer of your findings. Yeah, I think we're going to cover that right at the end. Now, how do we address issues arising uh, to and from occupational hearing loss? Well, depending upon where you work, Rod, and who your employer is, um, there's going to be a lot of legislation around this because to prove that you've acquired an occupational hearing loss, your hearing would have needed to have been tested in some way when you began the job. Otherwise, it would be very hard to attribute to the employer the fact that your hearing loss was in any way due to that occupation. However, if your hearing loss is found to be occupational, 
then you have the right to be supportive through the process to get hearing aids, which should be covered by work cover. Daniel Pistrito, you're an audiometrist, a clinical coordinator and assistive listening device specialist at Australian hearing aid company Blamey Saunders. And, uh, mate, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate that. Thanks for that, Rod. Okie dokie. Now, I just want to thank our sponsors at Blamey Saunders Hears, and you can test your hearing at any time using a clinically validated online test developed by Blamey Saunders Hears, and it'll tell you how well you hear and what sounds of speech you don't hear well. And if you want more information on that, go to blameysaunders.com.au and take the test. That's blameysaunders.com.